Hello, welcome back to my allotment garden. Today I'm going to be planting all of my spring bulbs in lots of different containers here. We've got a range of different sized terracotta pots and a few metal containers as well. I'm going to be doing a bulb lasagna and showing you how I squirrel proof my pots because the squirrels love to eat spring bulbs, particularly tulips. Hopefully you've already watched the previous part one of the video to know exactly which bulbs it is that I'm planting. I've got quite a few here, but I've also got a few winter bedding plants that I've picked up as well to finish off the top of the containers to give them some extra interest over the winter months before the spring bulbs bloom. Some of the things I'll be using in this video include obviously my containers. I'm using some standard size chicken wire, some wire cutters, I've also got my multi-purpose peat-free compost. This is the Melcourt brand. And I've also got some grit and that is to improve the drainage of our containers. I've got quite a lot of bulbs to plant today, but to kick things off, we're going to start with the bulb lasagna in my shallow container here. So I'm going to get set up on the table behind me. So in this container here, we're going to have three layers of spring bulbs. We're going to have the tulips on the bottom. We're going to have mascara in the middle and then the crocus on the top and they will stagger out the flowering season. So we'll have about three months of blooms from one container. So first of all, we'll have the crocus blooming around February time, followed by the mascari and then the tulips around April. So let's get the container ready. First of all, I'm going to fill the bottom of the pot with a gritty mixture of compost. So I'm just gonna fill up the bottom layer about an inch or two. And into this, I'm going to add a little bit of grit. The grit will improve the drainage and make sure that those bulbs don't drown because they do not like to be wet. I'm actually going to be planting two of these containers. So I'll be dividing my bulbs into two different pots. Uh, the second one I've got just here. So that's the bottom layer filled. This is now ready for our tulips. These are the biggest bulbs that require the the um, deepest planting depth. So they're just going to sit just close to the bottom there and tulips you want to plant three times the depth of the bulb, which is the same for all of our spring bulbs. So we've got the concerto here. This is actually a pack of 10, so I'm going to plant five in each of my containers. So I'm just going to put four in a square and then one in the center there. So they're about two inches apart, which is fine. So that's the first layer done. We're now going to top this with some more compost. And in the mid layer, we're going to put the muscari bulbs. So we're now about halfway up the bowl. The muscari bulbs that I have are all in different colors. We've got a mix of white, pink and blue and I want them to be all mixed up in the bowl. So I'm just going to pop them all into a pot, mix them up and then put them out. There we are, so they're all in there. I'm just gonna give them a good, good mix. Now I need to plant 25 of these in each bowl. So I'll just roughly get out 25. One, two, three, four, five. And now these I'm just going to arrange in a little bit of a ring. Again, three times the depth of the bulb. So if you imagine this is where the surface is. Uh, so it's going to be about three times this depth. So I'm just going to plant them into a bit of a circle. And these all should pop up at the same time. You really don't have to be too particular about it but obviously we want to plant them with the root end facing down and the pointy end up. So that's the muscari planted. And now we're going to top this off with another layer of compost. Now that we're quite near the surface, I'm actually going to protect my bowl of beautiful bulbs with some chicken wire to stop the squirrels and rodents from digging up the bulbs because they just love to eat tulips. So I just I got a piece of chicken wire that's already sort of cut to size. I'm just going to press this in and I find I don't really need to peg it down. And if you've got an edge that you can work around the side to help secure it in place, then that's great. Uh, and the bulbs will actually grow through this absolutely fine. 
won't have any trouble. I did this last year and it worked really, really well. And you could actually see where something had tried to dig it up, uh, but it didn't manage to get any of the bulbs and they all still grew fine. So this is my little method because we do have some rodents and squirrels here on the allotment sites. They are the gray squirrel, the American squirrel, not our native. <laughs> Those are in few numbers now. Now I'm going to fill this right to the top of the bowl with the remaining compost and then we're just going to push the last bulbs in because they're going to be really small. Now this compost is still quite dry so it will actually sink a little bit as it gets wet and we'll make sure we give our pots a good water at the end of the day. So that's now disguised that um, chicken wire but we do still have the crocus to plant. I've got 50 altogether, so I'm going to save one of these packets for my second pot. So I've got 25 to put in here. And crocus bulbs really are quite small. As you can see, they're already starting to shoot. So I'm just going to arrange them into a bit of a scattered circle pattern. There's no need to be too particular about it. And now we're just going to feel around that mesh and push them through it. If you've got any excess paperiness in your bowl, just give it a bit of a blow, blow it away so you can see what you're doing. So these have quite a flat base and uh, that's how you can tell that it's the bottom because they don't quite have any roots just yet. There we are, I'm quite happy with that. So once you've got them all laid out, it's just a case of pushing them down. And these don't need to go too deep at all. But just past that wire, obviously be careful of your fingers if you are using this technique. You might not have a problem with squirrels, in which case uh, I'm quite jealous. <laughs> Again, just three times the depth of the bulb. But since these ones are so small, they don't need to go that deep at all. I'm just going to give it one last scoop of compost to fill up the top. I've just noticed the price is still on this, so I should probably take that off as well. It was a bargain though, half price from $14.49 to $7.25, which I thought was a good buy. <laughs> That's our spring bulb lasagna all planted now, it just needs a really good watering. You might like to finish it. Some people put um, like a moss covering just as a decorative effect, or you might want to put some small pebbles that might also help prevent um, the rodent critters from digging up your bulbs. So now that one's done, let's move on to the next one. When you've got lots of different varieties that you're growing and you're not sure how to um, order them or layer them, uh, what I've done is I've actually printed out these little info uh, sheets that are really useful so that you can remember exactly what they look like, how tall they grow and what time in spring they're going to bloom because a common mistake that I think some people make or they don't realise is that you know some tulips will bloom earlier than the others so if you want them all to bloom at the same time you've got to work with your timings on what's going to bloom when. So my idea is that I'll have early bloomers followed by late bloomers so that I get a continued vase or pot should I say. <laughs> of course sometimes the weather can sort of play a mock with all of our plans and I remember last February it was really really warm and everything grew so quickly and I'm pretty sure that some of the later varieties grew a bit earlier than they would usually so that's something to bear in mind <laughs> um, if you're layering your bulbs obviously if you just want one pot filled with one type of tulip it's more of a traditional way of doing things then that's perfectly fine so I've just been getting everything ready uh, by laying out which tulips I want in which pots so I know exactly what's going where and I've cut all of the individual pieces of chicken wire to put in each pot to prevent the uh, squirrels from getting them. I've just got to decide where I want these last sets of Orange Princess Sensual Touch and Victoria's Secret. Uh, oh I've got two pots here at the back. So I'm wondering if my Sensual Touch and Victoria's Secret 
will bloom at the same time. So I'm just going to have another look. So Victoria's Secret is a mid to late. And will that work with the orange sensual touch? This one also blooms mid to late. Do you think they'll go together? Maybe we should try it. I think we should. So we're going to have early orange princess followed by a mix of those. So I'll have five of each, which means I have to split them up. All right, everything's laid out and set, ready to go. Just need to cut a little bit more chicken wire and I'm ready to plant them. Now, this rather tall container is what I grew some of my dahlias in over the summer months. It was the smaller single flowering dahlias that I've taken out. They're going to be stored over winter and I'm going to grow some tulips in here for spring. In this pot, I'm going to put my black parrot and orange princess. So we've got an early bloomer and a late bloomer. I'm going to mix them together and hopefully we'll have one flower before the other one. So first of all, I'm going to make a similar gritty compost mix for the bottom. I'll pop in two scoops of this with some more grit. Now these tulips are going to be planted at a depth of about eight inches. So we're looking at filling this container about halfway with compost. So I'm just going to fill it up with compost now. So I have 10 of each of these bulbs and I've got a feeling they might not all fit, but we'll, uh, so we'll see. So this is the black parrot. It's a good idea to go through your bulbs and just check the quality before you plant them in case you've got any that have gone mouldy or turned to mush, just discard those. Uh, this one does have a little bit of green mould on it, which isn't great, but I think that's just from storage. Um, when you store your bulbs, if you're not able to plant them straight away, you want to keep them somewhere cool and dark and preferably quite ventilated if possible. Otherwise they can go mouldy. So I'm just going to arrange these into a bit of a circle pattern. And when you plant tulips, you can give them about a bulb spacing in between. But if they're just about touching, if there's just a tiny gap, then that's also fine. There we are. So I've got eight of them in here and I'm going to add the others as well. November is a great time to plant your tulips. You want to plant them ideally after it gets a little bit cold, <clears throat> especially if you've had a frost, because that helps to prevent a tulip disease called fire blight. But it's been such a mild November this year. And I think even if you plant them in December, it'll be fine. And in fact, in that podcast that I listened to that I mentioned on the previous video with Sarah Raven, she said that she ran a bit of an experiment and she planted tulips every fortnight from September to January and they all still bloomed. It's just that the ones that you plant later will bloom a little bit later. So I think she said she had some blooming in June from her late planted ones. So, you know, they'll still flower, just get them in. <laughs> As you can see, they're packed in quite tight in there, but they'll be absolutely fine. I'm just going to fill it up with compost next. Now I'm just putting a bit of compost over the top of the bulbs just to cover them and I'm going to raise it up to about this level here and now I'm going to put in the chicken wire, stop them critters. So it's just a case of pushing it down and along those edges. Now that that lays in I'm going to fill it up with a lot more compost and then we're going to top the surface of the container with some decorative winter bedding. That compost is now almost level with the surface. I've got some lovely little winter pansies in this really lovely sort of pinky maroony kind of colour, similar to some of the tulips actually. And this will bloom over the winter months and into early spring and then it will start to sort of peter out a little bit and hopefully the spring bulbs should have no trouble in growing through and around it. I did this before in the trough under my shed and it worked brilliantly. So I've got three of these I'm going to pop 
into a bit of a triangle shape and uh, yeah just going to pop these in. Now that chicken wire shouldn't matter at all because it's a little bit deeper than the root system. So just dig a little hole with your hand as deep as the roots and pop it in. Just gives you something to look at over the winter months and not have to stare at bare soil. And these will go either side of my shed so I have another one that I've already made that looks the same. And these winter pansies are really cheap to buy. Um, some people think they're a bit of a granny flower <laughs> but you know you don't get many flowers that bloom this late in the year so any kind of touch of colour when all of this starts to turn brown and there's not much to see it's just um, a very welcome sight. So there we are that's that tall container done and next got to move on to the others. Next up we've got my big metal grey container I've already put some compost in the bottom same process in this one we're going to have orange princess and irene parrot so we've got that early and that late flower again i thought about putting some daffodils in with this but then i realized that they'd probably bloom at a height of about 30 to 40 centimeters at the same time as the orange princess that bloom at 20 to 25 centimeters so the height would look a bit off so i've decided to stick with just tulips again for this one with the early and the late I've managed to fit 15 in here. I'm going to save those, put them somewhere else so that I can still fit in the Princess Irene tulip. And one of the good things about Farmer Gracie is that all the packaging can just go straight into my compost bin. So now I'm just going to fill this one up almost to the top and then I've got some more bedding to go on the top of this one as well. Oh don't forget the chicken wire. <laughs> now we've put in more compost almost to the top. Now for the top of this one I'm going to try something different. We're going to have two different flowers. We're going to have the pansies as well as the cyclamen that have really beautiful pink flowers with a really feathered textured uh, petal and that gorgeous foliage with the striking veining running through it. So I have three of these which again I'll put into a bit of a triangle formation. It's always best to plant in threes and fives and sevens if you can. Odd numbers always look best. So I have a little triangle there I think. Perhaps with one of these in between How's that look? <laughs> but because the roots on these are really soft, they're not fibrous like a shrub or anything. Um, again, hopefully those bulbs should grow through it fine. So we have it. This one's now all planted up for spring with lots of beautiful winter bedding on the top as well. Well, that's about all we have time for today. I've got all my containers planted. I've just got the wallflowers and the daffodils to put in the raised border where my dahlias are at the top of the plot but the dahlias are currently still in there because they're still blooming even though it's the end of November uh, so I can't plant them until those dahlias are lifted and I've also got the pink tulips to plant under the apple tree as and when I get time because we're out of time today but there's still plenty of time to get them in the ground. As far as the care and maintenance goes from now on it's just a case of sitting back relaxing and waiting for them to appear in spring but one thing to watch out for is if you've got yours in containers in springtime especially in the UK our springs are getting increasingly warmer and quite hot especially in February this year um, so if you're growing in containers just make sure they're kept watered if we have any dry spells and also I forgot to mention you may want to label your pots if you've got specialist bulbs in them so that you don't get them mixed up. Thank you very much for joining me today I hope you found this video useful I hope that you got your spring bulbs in if not there's still plenty of time in fact I may have placed another order and I've got some alliums on the way <laughs> oops <laughs> I just can't help myself um, yeah so I hope you've got your spring bulbs in or are going to quite soon um, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you real soon mm -hmm.